Good morning, everybody. Or afternoon, evening. I don't know when you're watching. Morning for me. And uh, we're taking a quick trip down one of my favorite roads. But I'll tell you what, it's super windy today. And if you ride, you know what that means. You gotta be prepared for wind gusts. And uh, I don't know, it's definitely wind gusts. The weather channel said 17 mile per hour sustained wind. So you know the gusts are happening above that. Uh, I grabbed one of my more heavy bikes. One of my favorite rides. And I will tell you why. This is the 1984 Honda Sabre V65. 1100 cc or 1098 if you want to be particular but this was only made 84 and 85 and uh, I guess they just decided they needed to focus on something else and this bike must not have been selling because why such a fantastic motorcycle would be diluted from the lineup I guess it just didn't really have a purpose like it was mad fast and quite frankly one of the most versatile bikes I have ridden it's super comfortable it I'll show you this later at the end of the video but and I'll tell you the story about why we don't have gauges okay well this guy is not gonna come out thank you uh, but the real thing about this motorcycle is it pulls in every gear and I can tell you that because when I wrecked it one time I didn't have any one two three I, I think I had third gear couldn't shift into the first or second so I had to run about 45 minutes only using the upper gears which really didn't make a difference I, I mean you could start out from zero in third gear on this bike you can pull pull in overdrive we'll do it now oh, the only thing the shocks on this aren't great I don't know why so overdrive pull just roll into it and take off now overdrive you're obviously not going to have the kick but it still goes no falters whatsoever this bike is stock basically there are things that have been changed like the handlebars because I bent them both ways in two different laydowns so I wanted something a little lower a little bit so I could lean forward a little more something a little more aggressive and I did get these bars off of a Sabre 700 and uh, I don't know mounted right up and they fit perfect and I love it so it's pretty comfortable for me the other bars kind of they're a little goofy the factory bars anyway and like I said I bent them one way I rode that way for a while and then I bent them the other way on the other side and I had to had to call it quits on those bars I don't like to change things out if they're working they just weren't working anymore so let's talk about the giant saber this is the same engine a little more horsepower as the v65 magna magna horsepower is 116 and they ran that bike from 83 through 86 i did not study before i left guys so hopefully i'm throwing this information out correctly but um, the Magna had 116 horsepower and you all know about the V65 Magna. The V65 Sabre tweaked that up to 121. I don't know how or why, but I can tell you it worked. This bike is effortless to move. Like I said, it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. I don't have specs on that, but uh, what can I tell you? It just, like I said, it's so torquey that you can just 
move out in any gear. There's times I don't feel like shifting into first and I won't just because I know I don't have to. But I already talked about laying this over. These are different mirrors because I have cracked the ones that were on here previously. It wasn't due to the power. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe it's too much bike for me. But uh, the one time I wasn't paying attention and I ran straight off the road. I didn't catch the turn. It was dark. And I just rode straight into a curb and into this little ravine and uh, it was leaking coolant everywhere it was not fun my pant leg was all wet but after a couple people stopped the fire company guys came down to check on me because they heard the accident I picked it up and I rode it home luckily it didn't get too hot on my trip the only thing that didn't that stopped working was my clutch I think the clutch plates, something was getting too hot. And when they heated up, the clutch stopped working. So I must have been uh, boiling the fluid or something. I don't know. When I got home, I changed out the fluid and it was fine from then on. Uh, yeah, there was no coolant in the system, but I kept it moving and air, air cooled it down just fine. Second time, I left my house and I had run back to grab something and I backed out again and left not knowing that the kickstand was down and there would be a kill switch as far as I know but somebody must have bypassed it before I got the bike and I didn't know the kickstand was down and I went to take a turn and the kickstand was down and I felt it and I should have just kicked it up I didn't think in the moment so what did I do I just bailed ran off the road into some wet grass and laid it over and uh, I was fine both times but the bike did a turn and a somersault and scratched up some things and uh, didn't bust it up that bad that time both times I had to put turn signals back on but really other than that didn't harm the bike I picked it up started it rode it home parked at that time and pulled the grabbed my car and I was headed to dinner so I was like ah after that I'm just gonna drive so uh, this has a Corbin seat on it it's very flat and I've talked before I'm only 5'5 five five, so uh, I'm not blessed in the lengthy legs situation so I have short legs this bike would be too tall for me to be putting both feet down if I had the factory seat. I do have another bike just like this and uh, it has factory everything. So that bike's tall for me. I can put one leg down, but like I said, it's, it's kind of tall and a little top heavy, just a little bit. So if you're not sure footed on your feet, and you're not ready for that weight then uh, you need to be I don't know put a different seat on it uh, this bike does have you can get a Blackbird CB 1100 rear suspension shock for this and the previous owner did that thinking he could get better uh, handling better suspension and uh, he didn't really notice the difference he said I do have that adjusted way down to the point where I can comfortably reach the ground so this bike is not too tall for me now but that's due to the alterations uh, the one place that this does not shine is basically in the suspension you hit a bump you feel every bit of it and that probably has to do with the seat being so hard the seats flat and hard that's that's all it is and uh, there's no cushion but uh, you feel the jars and the shocks through the whole bike. And that's just something you have to kind of look ahead and see the road and decide you're going to brace yourself with your legs or not. Uh, but, you know, I just, I just love this bike. I was asked yesterday what my favorite bike is that I have. And uh, I said, I'm really loving the cruisers, but 
I keep coming back to this motorcycle right here. It's just thrilling with all the power. It's just so much fun to ride. Uh, but yeah, one of my accidents, I pretty much drug the top end of it here along. And you can see I no longer have... Oh, is that an old... Maybe a silver wing or a gold wing? I don't know. Kind of sounded like a CB. Anyway, um, I no longer have a speedometer that works. I thought maybe it was a cable, I replaced it, and uh, so far I haven't gotten the speedo to, uh, to work again. So for the time being, here's an advertisement for quad lock and uh, speedometer on your phone. I'm thinking about putting in a uh, GPS speedometer on this thing, but uh, if this is working, why mess with it, you know? So for now, Quad Lock has got my phone locked in pretty good. I've been really impressed with that. And uh, Speedo is pretty good. The other thing I was, so before I set, set up the phone for this, what I would do is uh, you can kind of judge where the speed is by the RPM on the tachometer. So if I'm in fourth gear, you can, you can see it right now. Fourth gear in 4,000 RPMs, we're at almost plus 10. So basically, if you're in third, the, the RPMs match up pretty good. So if I'm in third gear, and I just shifted up to fifth, so this is not an example. But if I'm in third gear, 3,000 RPMs is about 30 miles per hour. 50 is about 50 miles per hour. As you can see, in fifth gear, I add about 15, so you got 30, 45. Yep, 45, right there. So I don't know, that does not, I'm sure, match up for all bikes, but it's what I figured out on this, and uh, it worked until I set up my phone. Uh, one thing to note on this, I do need to do a brake job. I think we probably, need to put new fluid in there and uh, what's interesting about this an 84 Honda product it calls for dot four when uh, it's about the time they're probably still using dot three in most most things but the bigger bikes do call for dot four so that's interesting a little bit higher boiling point maybe they expected you to use the brakes harder on this bike uh, in the comments give me Guys, I wonder what this bike was meant, built for. Was this a sport touring motorcycle in the 80s? Because I feel like the Interceptor, which you could get that with a 1,000cc engine, similar to this one, that was probably, I mean, no, it wasn't probably. That's your sport racing bike. You had the Magna, that's definitely your cruiser. Um, so this is a standard. And I feel like this big one, you could get these in uh, 700, 750 range, the Sabres. But I feel like the 1100 was probably like the sport touring bike because, guys, you have everything you need here. I have a clock. Now, I know this is dirty and disgusting. I'll try to clean up the lenses so they're legible. But I have a clock on here, fuel gauge. This thing holds almost, I think it's like four and a half gallons of fuel. And unfortunately, I can't do my trip meter anymore to see what miles I'm getting. But I'm gonna tell you, this thing runs all day. And uh, yeah, you have gas gauge, uh, temperature. Oh, I do have a separate trip. No, I think the trip meter actually runs through there, so. I don't know that that's going to work on this. My 83 Sabre 750 actually has it all digital, so that works good. I'll have to ride that one and show you that bike, but um, this is just a great setup for a motorcycle, and I put a rack and a backrest on it, so passengers love to ride on it with me. 
they all have their favorite bikes, but uh, I don't know. This one's pretty comfy, and we have the luggage rack. So uh, I guess that's it for now. Like I said, I will give you a tour of the bike itself at the end of the video. But hey, this is kind of an intro if you haven't seen this bike before. If you have seen it before, then you know what it's been through. And uh, I'm going to plan not to wreck it anymore. Yeah, like I said, the only downfall on this bike, I think, is it's a little tall for some riders and uh, the suspension is not great. I'm not saying it's not. I don't know if it's all factory suspension. I may have adjustments. I do have adjustments. I just see that now. I could probably adjust it, maybe get it a little better, but that's the one complaint I have on this bike. The suspension's a little rough. That guy's got a load. All right, let's talk about the over-engineered Honda Sabre. This bike is super heavy. You can tell everything was built to last. Um, I don't know if this bike had 77,000 miles when I wrecked it, but uh, it definitely uh, doesn't feel like it. The gears, all the gears slide in smooth, and you actually got to kick them in. Like, they're... You know, like a lot of these slippier clutches, like they just slide in. Like this one, you literally just know that you have to shift it. Like it's not just going to kick in itself. Uh, it's it's just, it's a pleasant feeling when you know it's engaged. Like you just click and boom, it's there. Uh, I don't know, this bike just feels like it's solid. It's not going to let you down. And obviously I've wrecked it twice. And both times I picked it up and, and drove away and uh, did some minor repairs and it's back on the road again. So, I don't know. I just, something about this motorcycle that I absolutely love. And uh, you can pick up and roll in fifth gear. It's just super fun and uh, rewarding. 121 horsepower. And uh, I should look up the specs for you. But this is just a lot of fun. Hydraulic clutch, hydraulic brake, everything you need to know in the digital readout, even though it's kind of, I need to clean it up. But you have your gear indicator, your zero through six gears, and fuel gauge, temp gauge, and a clock. And uh, I don't know, let me give a shout out to uh, Pirate Batteries. I got this bike with a pirate battery installed and it has never let me down. I don't even think I've ever had to charge it. It's awesome. So, quick thing about the Honda 84 Honda Sabre V65 VF1100C guys. This bike, sorry, VF1100S for Sabre. It's not a Magna. So, awesome bike. You're going to want to ride this thing. It's just if you ever get a chance to be around one, take it. This thing can keep up with the best of them. I don't know, it's not as quick on the line as a sport bike, but man, she goes when she needs to. Thanks for watching. Catch you out there on the road.